Hello, it's Keith here, and this is the first in a new series in which we're going to be looking at AccuSprite Editor. I'm going to discuss how to use it and give a bit of basics of how the program works and some of its functionality that you possibly don't know about. We're not going to be going into the specifics of some of the um, menu options like the export options because they've actually been covered already in other episodes of my main series. And uh, now AccuSprite Editor actually has a help function which will jump straight to the relevant lessons where they already exist. However, the basic graphical functionality of drawing pixels of editing sprites and things it's become quite complex as the program has progressed but now i think the software is at a point where it's not likely to see significant changes in that aspect and i've had a request from one of my patrons and so we're going to cover today some of the basics of how the sprite designer was designed to work some of its functionality and over the following episodes we'll look into some of the more details now today we're going to be looking at the user interface itself and um, just the very basics of the layouts what each part of the screen does and then over further episodes we'll look at the graphical tools that it provides and things like that so today we're just going to go over the ui and so let's go over and have a look at the program and let's make a start okay so here is AccuSprite editor now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to close it down quickly we get an exit message which has appeared off screen and if I just load it up again, and you will see when Acrosbyte Editor starts, you get this help message down here with um, a link to the website. And it also highlights this new help button here and this online help option here. Now, if you click online help, you will go to the website you can see just here. It's not uploaded yet, but it will be by the time you see this video, hopefully. But as well as that, you've now got this new help button here. And if you click on this help button here, you see it becomes highlighted. And then if I go to any of the menu options, for example, if I go to Amstrad CPC file, and then save CPC by new, you'll see there's a little question mark here. And this means there's a help link available. Now, if I click on this, you will see that the web browser opens up and it jumps straight to my website with the lesson that this um, function was actually used in. And so if you need to know how to use the export for that option, you can see it on my website. Now, obviously some of the options don't have relevant links, but I'm trying to put them in where possible and um, I'll try and make new tutorials if it's needed. Some of the functions are very complicated and are really outside of the scope of normal use. For example, um, save and load Chibi Akamas format binary. These were designed for Chibi Akamas itself. They're not really, and, and ZigTile, for example, that was an experimental thing I was doing for a tile drawing routine, which I've never used. So as I say, there's, there's a lot of functionality that's been added to AccuSprite Editor as I've needed it that isn't covered in these tutorials and probably never will be. So there will never be many options for everything. But generally speaking, please try out this help option. And I'm also adding now tool tips to all of the buttons to try and give more explanation of what they do. So that's your first point of help before using AccuSprite Editor. Now that aside, uh, of course, we are going to go over the actual details of it today. And today we're just going to look at the general layout. So starting at the help, we've got down here these two help, help buttons here, which should give you some documentation. Above that, we've got an undo button and a redo button, which you can also do with Control Z and Control Shift and Z if you're, if you're drawing and you decide you don't want to do that, you can just click on undo. The refresh button, that's just in case that uh, there's a graphical glitch on screen. Sometimes some of the functions don't refresh the screen as they should. So if things are looking are wrong or are sort of not quite as they should be, click on, re on refresh, we'll cal recalculate the visual display here and here. Okay, so those are the undo and redo. Here we've got our drawing functions. We've got pixel paint, which is just for drawing dots. ZX paint, which is for filling color attributes. Color swap, which is for swapping either eight by eight blocks of color or a single sprite or the entire sprite. This is good for if you're recoloring a sprite, for example, a 16 color sprite down to four colors or something like that. Tile copy. This is for the limited tile map functionality of Acu Sprite Editor. It's not really a tile mapping tool, but it can work a bit like one. Basically, the first sprite will be um, a tile bank and then the second sprite onwards will be using those tiles to draw an image. And this is how I've exported the um, Chibi Aliens. Um, title screen which had to be converted to a 256 tile tile map for some of the systems so it does have very basic functionality but it's not great not gonna lie it might get better just depends how this this, this program goes it's really a bitmap editor not a tile editor it was sort of functionality I cobbled in really now flood fill that should be fairly obvious that's going to fill areas of the screen so there we go so these are our basic tools here and you should notice that every time we click on one of these a new menu opens up here and this is the um, relevant tool options for that function okay now 
Of course, these are relatively limited in their range. And what I'd suggest if you want more functionality is that you use something like Kriter, Critter, which is what I've used all, for all of my graphics work, so to speak. So if we just go over to um, Kriter here, so here it is. And if we just create a new image very quickly, and we'll just create it at 32 by 32. OK, so I'm just going to very quickly create something here that we're then going to try and import in. So I'm going to select an orange here and I'm going to draw a bit of a smiley face. Sort of, sort of a smiley face. Um, OK, and then I will select a red nose. Now, of course, this general very simple pixel plotting you could just as easily do in AccuSprite Editor. But if you're doing more complex uh, sort of multi-layered stuff, AccuSprite Editor is never going to support that. So I've drawn that and I've copied that into the clipboard. So now I can do Edit and Paste from Clipboard or Control V, and I get an option saying Replace Sprite. I say yes, and you can see it's pasted in. But you can see also that the colors are not correct, and that's because when we do copy and pasting, we're using the palette of the sprite. Now, the palette is shown at the top of the screen, the first 16 colors, and the remaining colors for the 256 color mode are down here in the palette tab because there's simply too many to show up here. Now, in a case like this, Acu Sprite Editor won't change the palette of our sprite. There is an option on the file menu to import an image with the palette, but that will change your palette. And that's not really what I'd recommend you want to do. Really, you're probably going to want to define your palette for your game and have that comment to all your sprites. So you'd want to do that before you start pasting sprites in. And so in this case, we should have defined our palette before we tried to paste that image. Uh, we can change our palette. We've got a default one here, but you're almost certainly going to want to change that. You use this set palette button just here. So I click this and I've got two options, question mark or hash. Now, if I click a third time, you see that it just turned off. But if I click question mark and then I select one of the entries in here and let's select this one here, I then get the Windows standard color picker and I can select a color. So I could select green here, click on OK, and you can see that color has now changed to green. Alternately, I can click this hash option here and click here. And then we get a one nibble, effectively one letter per channel color definition. And the reason that we're using one letter per color channel is this is the format used by the MSX2, um, V9K and the CPC Plus. So this is the format that my tutorials use and it's effectively the first letter of, um, of each pair within a sort of standard hexadecimal color code. So if I wanted to define a color, for example, if I wanted to make this into a magenta, then I could just put zero for the unused nibble, zero for green, FF and I can just click OK and you can see it's changed to magenta here. Now, what I wanted, if you remember from my sprite, I actually wanted an orange and it didn't paste correctly. But what I can do here is I can use set palette. I can change this. I can change it to an orange. And now if I just do a copy, I'll just copy back from there. And if I paste again here, just with control V this time and click OK, you can see the orange has now been used correctly because it's matching to the correct, it's matching to the most similar color within the palette. So as long as I've got that color, then I can work on this fine. Now, if we want to make changes here, we can zoom in here with this slider here and we can then make changes. Now, you'll notice that there's a sort of grid effect and that's to help us draw within eight by eight areas. And what we could do, for example, is if I just um, make a few changes to this, now, first, I need to turn off set palette here, so I'll just click on that, and maybe we'll give him some eyebrows, just something like that. I don't know why. Now, what I tend to do is I tend to do a combination of tweaks within AcuSprite Editor and then transferring back to our um, to Crito and repeatedly do this until the sprite is what I need. And of course, we can copy our sprite again here, go back to Crito here, and then if we do new and paste again. What you'll see now is when we've actually pasted here, we've got a 256 square image because that's the size of the in sprites internally in AcuSprite Editor. That's the sort of range of our work area. And then you can see we've got the palette down here. So we can now select the correct colors for the palette 
that we want that we've defined and make sure we're, defi we're drawing with those correct colors and of course that's going to mean there's not going to be any problems when it comes to pasting back into Acrosprite Editor. If I just copy into my clipboard again there and go over here and then just paste back in here you can see we've now got the changes we just made. Another option is if we go to the edit menu and we do copy preview which is control shift and C now this is um, this isn't really so much for sprite editing. It's more for sort of um, you know taking screenshots and things. When we paste back, I'll just do a new one there. That's kind of got misaligned. Um, we, we're actually effectively copying the preview screen with the grid and also with any spectrum color attributes and things. So it's uh, it's really what you see is what you get for that one. But as I say, it is handy for um, if you're taking screenshots of your work, you need to um, use it on your website and things like that. So as I say, it's, it's not really for editing, it's more for just sort of final preview work. But as I say, that's another option there. Now, as well as set pal, we've got alt pal, and this is for things like spectrum color attributes here. Now, this is an experimental function, and I, to be honest, it doesn't export those color attributes in many of the other options, but as it is there, it does work in some cases. The Nest version doesn't work at all yet. Um, I think the MSX one does work in some of the options, but as I say, it's very experimental and it, it, because of the large amount of time it would take to get that kind of functionality working in all of the cases, generally speaking, it isn't supported. You, you want to sort of, as I said, check out the tutorials relating to each export function to learn how to use them. So if we just go to say um, Z80 and um, Spectrum, for example, file and um, save rule bitmap here. We've gone to this tutorial here, Easy Sprites on the ZX Spectrum, and this tutorial will teach you how to make a smiley, but it will also teach you how to include a file from the export of AcuSprite Editor here. This was exported with AcuSprite Editor using that function. So you can now go to the website, you can download the source code, and hopefully you can get started with that file yourself if you want to do so. So that's the, um, as I say, that, that's how you can just sort of check whether the extra options of alternate palette are supported by the system. As I say, and unfortunately, I'm afraid in a lot of cases, they're not just because the, the complexity added to the export routines and the resulting source code that would have to read those routines in would be very, very large. So that's, um, that's those options over there. We're not going to go into the pixel paint options. We're gonna cover these, these functions in a separate lesson. Now, if the settings option, you can generally ignore this. This is relating to the Chibi Akamas bitmap format, which isn't really used in my tutorials. That was for, for Chibi Akamas itself, so just ignore that. Now, down the bottom here, we've got some options. A bank of sprites within AcuSprite Editor supports up to 64 sprites. And so you can use next sprite and last sprite to toggle between them. So you can have like um, your different characters, if you will, or your different tiles, if you were drawing tiles. And so that's what the sprites are for. And we can switch between them with these options here. Now, as well as different sprites, they would, as I say, they would be your different enemies maybe. You can have different banks. There's up to eight banks supported. And these would are intended to be the separate frames of animation. So the walking cycles or the, um, the mouth opening and closing on your enemy or something like that. Um, the reason that I've done it like this is with working with the 8-bit systems, you've often got different limitations. And a system with 128K memory, you, you might have enough memory for four banks of animation. But on a 64K system, you may have to halve that down to just two. So by splitting into separate banks of di for different frames of animation, I found that this made it a much easier to work with with regard to different frames of animation and AcuSprite Editor does have some support for a um, kind of onion skinning sort of effect. So if we just go to one of our sprites here and if I then go to settings here and last bank here. Now we're in bank zero here but if I click next you'll now see a sort of shadow of the last bank so I can now draw in the next frame of animation for this character and I can still see the last one and so as I say that that is some extra functionality for the um, for the banks, which, as I say, I define designed for animation. There, at the bottom here, just below that, we've got a couple of other options here: size to eight by eight grid and fixed sprite size. Now, when AcuSprite Editor exports, it picks the size of your sprite based on the non-zero pixels. So, if you had a sprite, let's say we had a sprite just here, now if the if our character was just that. Well, that would be being sized to be four by four pixels, but there may be cases where we need to export an eight by eight sprite to keep things uniform. Maybe our, maybe our drawing routine relies on that. 
or maybe we've got other reasons that we need to be limited to sort of even boundaries. So by default, size to eight by eight grid is ticked because that will keep things a bit more logical. But there may be cases where you actually need a much bigger sprite, no matter what's in the data. And you can use the fixed sprite size option here. If we just tick that, an option will come up asking us what the sprite size is. And we can tell it, well, actually this sprite is 32 by 32. And that will now export this entire range, even though it was all blank. Alternatively, if we've got a big, big old mess and we don't want all of that, well, we can now just tick this and we can tell it, well, actually that sprite was only four by four. And that will, when it exports, it will ignore all of this garbage on the screen here. So sometimes I use that as a quick way of just trimming down the sprite. Although we can actually also go to edit, canvas size and four by four just there and it will actually remove all the rest. But as I say, th that's something that I often use. These fixed sprite sizes stop the automatic stuff from guessing the size of the sprite because sometimes, you know, maybe you've been a bit sloppy when you're drawing your sprite and you've gone over the boundary and it's like, oh no, it, it's it's supposed to be 24 by 24, but I just put an odd pixel there. And now I've exported a huge sprite and it's uh, my file size is bigger than 64K. It, it could happen. So as I say, that's something there. Now, just with regards to sprite sizes and things, you'll notice that there's this sort of hint grid here so that we can work out where our boundaries are. You can make it fainter just by unticking that. You can see it's gone fainter there. Or you can change the size depending on the system you're working with. Some systems need different, different proportions to, to be efficient. And you can select all of the options here or you can turn the grid off if you don't like it. So you've got some options there. You can, of course, always see your preview here. I think I forgot to mention that, but that's certainly something you have. So there we go. Now, that's actually all I'm going to cover today. There's obviously quite a few more things here, and I've only gone into very brief detail on some of the functions today, and that's intentional. It was really just giving you an overview of the, um, of the, the different sections of the screen, a very basic description of the functions, and also to introduce the help function so that you know how to get to the tutorials that already exist relating to some of these export options. Anyway, I hope you found this interesting. If you have, please like and subscribe and that kind of thing, because I'll be doing some more on these and um, we'll be going into Acasprite Editor much more. It's used in all of my tutorials. It's literally what I use to create every single graphic, as far as I can recall, for my tutorials, for Chibi Akamas, for the Chibi Aliens game I've been working on. ASA. It's, it's just used for everything. So um, it's it should be good enough for you to do some simple graphics if you're starting out writing a game. That's not to say there's not some loads of other great and probably better programs out there. I'm not trying to say that Accurate Sprite Editor is the best. I just wanted when I was writing my code to have a program I had full control of. And so I started writing it and it is free and it open source. It's written in C sharp. So if you want to take it, download it and modify it, you're welcome to do so. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.